Good morning, church. You may have your seats. Thank you. Agbani Lagbaton. That is the last word. Agbani Lagbaton. That is God for you. It's not a man. Agbani Lagbaton. Agbani Lagbaton. That is God. It's not a man when he say yes, it's yes. No one can say no. So I want to salute our viewers all over the world for your time. Thank you very much, wherever you are. Jesus is there. The state of your heart matter. This time is not barrier. Are you there, my viewers? Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God give me a word for you today. That quickly lead me to the book of Psalm 66. And I wish I'm going to read for you right now. The book of Psalm 66. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and lying burden on our back. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. Listen to that again. Let me read that verse 12. It says, You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water. The, the last verse which I'm going to read. But you brought us to a place of abundance. This means God refines us with affliction. It means sin is lay high where there is no heat of trial and affliction. Just as impurities high in gold. Unless it goes through the furnace, impurity will hide in gold. I was trying to, to ask a gentleman in the church, which I believe he will be in the church today. After calling, 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 I said, can you trace this man inside the church? Later, I got to know that uh, the man did not come to church today. I said, why? Because he has a knock engine. He got up in the morning and found that the vehicle engine knocked. That should be the reason. As if the God that gave the vehicle cannot withdraw the vehicle. Yeah? The God that gave the vehicle to you cannot as well we draw it. When he noticed what only him, himself known, nobody know the reason, he can decide to withdraw what he has given you. God himself. That is God for you. When God noticed what only him have knowledge of. Nobody knows the reason, but for him, you know, if I allow this man to take this vehicle today, something worse may happen to him. So, because of that, something will happen to the vehicle to preserve the man, to protect you. 
to preserve him for the greater. But because of this, our brother did not come to church. He said, ah, the engine knock. Mm, the engine knock. That was the only reason given. Hmm. This is manifestation of sin. Which high where there is no heat of trial. Manifestation of weakness. When there is no heat of trial and temptation, you look so nice and gentle, very godly. It is too early to say, hey, this is pastor, this is bishop, this is born again. This is Pope, whatever you call the name. Let the heat of trial come before you judge, before you say, this is TV Joshua, this is prophet TV Joshua, this is bishop. Allow the heat of trial come and temptation. Then you can say, it's bishop. Tell your fellow Christian brother there what he does not want to hear and hear the reaction. Is he born again? But you know it's a pastor, whatever, whoever, whatever. Your neighbor just inside the church. Just tell him what he does not want to hear at all and see his reaction. That will tell you that he's a born again. Our weaknesses hide where there is no heat of trial and temptation. Tell your neighbor. I mean, sin hides where there is no heat of trial and temptation. You see, a man is very nice, quiet. Mm, it's quiet. You say it's quiet. Okay, tell him what he does not want to hear and see his reaction. Where there is no heat or trial and temptation, our weaknesses hide as if we are truly born again. Indeed, let temptation come. Let someone lie against you and let us see how you handle the situation. Your response to offense matter. Determine your future. Your response to temptation, your response to heat of trial, your response to affliction, determine your salvation. Don't forget the case of Job. Before Satan went to Job, he first consult Almighty God to give him permission. What are you going through? Ask God to help you make the most of difficulties. What is your situation? They are not meant to destroy you. It may be to refine you. I want to tell you, often time, God walks through the circumstances of life. Tell your neighbor. I can hear you. Because we don't know, and it's difficult for women or God to preach this. Because how do we preach it? Because I, I listen every day, all the time. I want to hear this message, but it's so difficult. But this is my personal experience. Often time, God works through the circumstances of life. 
your adverse circumstances. For the purpose of cleansing us. For the purpose of cleansing us and separating us from unclean and impure elements. To separate us from unclean and impure elements such as anger, bitterness, unforgiveness. Yes. Take this of that. Take this quote. Often time, God works through what? The circumstances of life. You ask God all the time to help you to make the most of difficulties. Help me as you did, Joseph. You know what Joseph went through before the palace, before throne. From Potiphar house, you know what happened? Pete, you know what happened? I help me, Lord, as you did, Joseph, to make the most of difficulties. Help me in my adverse circumstances to make the most of difficulties. So, all this that make you cry, lamenting, depressed, they are there to preserve you. It is time you should begin to see adverse circumstances as a friend, not enemy. Because oftentimes, God works through the circumstances of life, your difficulty, your sickness, your disease, your affliction, your setback, your attack, oftentimes, God walks through them. Are you with me? Oftentimes, God walks through them. He walks through them to take you to the throne. He walks through them. Tell your neighbor, oftentimes, God walks through my pain my affliction, said by, said by, whatever you call it, God walks through them, often time. He walks through them. But when this comes, you believe, ah, this enemy, this is wahala, this is trouble, this is to set, this is to destroy me. Time to depress, time to cry, time to lament, time to commit suicide. Who know? If you have not gone through that pain, who know what will have happened to you? If you have not been on the sea bed for a while, and you are out there going everywhere you want to go, who know what will have happened to you? If you have not run to depth, at the time you run to depth, who know what will have happened to you when you have chance to move everywhere? Who know what will happen? If you have got that pregnancy and have a baby, who know what will have happened to you when you are in the pregnancy stage? Or when you have the baby, who know what will have happened? If you have not been sacked from that place, who know what will have happened? Tell your neighbor, often time, God walks through the circumstances of life. So now it is time for you to think 
about yourself. Reproach right now. Think about yourself. Ah, I was going from one witch doctor to another because of this problem. I never knew God was walking through it to take me to the throne. I was looking at God in a very bad light. Uh, why God? Why what happened? Why this happened? I never knew. God was working things out for me through it. So rise up right now and say after me, you open with all your heart, Lord, give me a greater understanding of your heart. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. You know the reason? Because Jesus is law over your life. That is why you need greater understanding of his heart. If I'm right, Jesus is law over your life. If am I right? I can hear you. Yes. Who is law over your life? Jesus. Who is law over your life? Jesus. Open your lips, say to the Lord, give me a greater understanding of your heart. Prayer, prayer, open your list. Because Jesus is law over my life. Because you are the law over my life, give me a greater understanding of your heart. Dis Seigneur, donne-moi une plus grande compréhension de ton cœur, car tu es le Seigneur de ma vie. Pídele a Dios que le dé un mayor entendimiento de su corazón. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. You know, if you ask many how, how she here today, they will tell you, what is your dream? They say, no, I don't even understand whether I dream. I don't even understand what the word dream. And God gives them to guide all for this life. To guide you is for guide. He gives dream to guide us for this life. Without dream, you continue to walk in the dark. Without direction. People believe that they must sleep before have dream. It's a thing of the heart. Like you are standing now. Dream is going on. The thought of God. Your heart is telling you hope. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. This is why we are asking for a greater understanding of God's heart. Because Jesus is law over your life. Ask God to help you to see the dream for you. But not ask God for the dream. The dream is there already. Some people will say, okay, I ask for dream. Dream, I want to dream. No, already. It's only you are ignorant. You can't understand the voice of God. This is why I said to you that what you are going through to separate you from unclean and impure, such as bitterness, hatred, a lot is going on in your heart, pain of the past, offense. You need a greater understanding of God's heart to know that what you are going through God is aware. God is working through your circumstances. God is working through your sickness. God is working through your affliction. God is working through your setback. Amen. You need a greater understanding of God's heart to understand this. 
If not, you continue to run to the witch doctor, to cut it, to John secret card because of your problem, running to this, running to that, making a covenant to the world, running to this and this and that, because you don't understand, you think this is problem, this is Satan to you. Whereas, often time, God walk through your circumstances of life. See your dream in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, see your dream. Amen. People pray for dream. We don't pray for the dream. The dream is there already. As you are created, you are created with dream. Dream means direction. It's only, this is direction, but you can't see. But for you now to ask for direction, God should give you that. No, the direction is there already. See your dream in the name of Jesus. <laughs> What is my dream? How will I get there? It's our working with the Lord. Good and hard time alive. You are working with the Lord. Ha, good, hard, good, hard, good, hard, good. Hard could be sickness, hard could be deceit, hard could be setback, hard could be temptation, hard could be affliction. Good, bad, good, bad. Good, bad, good, bad. That is our working with the Lord. He walks through the circumstances of life, of one time. Good, bad, good, bad. This is how you are built. In the same day, day, night. When it is night, you have to sleep because it's night. That is how you grow and become old through day, night. So, you become strong in the law through good, bad. <laughs> you just need a greater understanding of God's heart to understand this. Our working with the law, good and hard time alike. A lot of hard time while you are sacrificed but reward a lot of good. That will be hard time, but so much good. But sacrifice, reward, sacrifice, reward. Sacrifice a lot of hard time. Not that will be good, but a lot of hard time. And you are, you are sacrificed now. You have not yet reached the reward time. Forget about your age. Forget about your age. When you reach reward time, you begin to eat with the law, see vision clear, understand the greater understand of God's heart. As I'm standing now, you'll be able to, oh my God. As I'm standing now, you'll be able to know who is talking to you. Is it T.B. Joshua or Prophet T.B. Joshua? But right now, I don't think anyone knows who is talking to him. You only see a man standing called T.B. Joshua. You don't know who is talking to you. That is why it's difficult for you to believe unless the grace, mighty grace, comes on you. You need faith to believe. Tell your neighbor, I need faith to believe. Give me faith to believe. I need faith to believe. Give me faith to believe. I can hear you. Who's going to give you faith? God. I need faith to believe. Give me faith to believe. You need faith to believe. You don't just run into the church and say, hey, they say I should come to synagogue today. Okay, I'm in the synagogue. I believe. I believe. I believe what's happening here. Oh, you believe, but you still need faith to believe. Back again. Dream. You know, dream is a gift of God. Tell your neighbor. Mm. Some people say, I want to dream. Pray, fast, fast, pray. <clears throat> it's a gift. Something that is a gift from God. Not the work of righteousness which you have done, but according to his grace. You dream. It's a gift from God. Just as faith is a gift from God. That is why you say, I need faith. Believe, you, you can manufacture your belief, but faith cannot be. 
Because you must have that faith in the finished work of God, not in yourself. You can decide to believe. I believe the man. I believe the business. But the word faith cannot be used that way. See your dream in the name of Jesus. See your dream in the name of Jesus. Mira tu sueño en el nombre de Jesús. There is no way we can say our dream when a hard time we lament. You run to the witch doctor, lamenting. You stop praying. You stop even coming to church. If God that gave you a vehicle decided to withdraw it, when he noticed what only him understand is a crime, the one that gave you can decide to withdraw. It's crazy. To test your faith, someone can just come to lie, a greater lie against you to show your response. Thus, you kept inside. To people, you are a man of God. To people, you are a born again. But let this temptation come and see how you react. A lot of people have been in the court. You have sued them for this and that. You never knew that God works through the circumstances of life. That is why your response should be of God. You can never hear me respond to any issue because I know how God works. See your dream in the name of Jesus. See your dream in the name of Jesus. Vois ton rêve dans le nom de Jésus. God gives dream to guide us in this life. For this life, you need guide. You say, you dream, 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 dream. That is the book of joy. But how many of you dream today? Before you even come in here, you are supposed to actually know what would be my appearance, the kind of wears I will put on. And you see it clear. And by the time you see it clear, you say, ah, this is exactly what I saw in the dream. To tell you that, oh, yes, uh, today is your day. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's with you. It's for you. It's a gift. You are born with it. Your dream is only dormant, unused. It's there. So you take this message home today. Oftentimes, God walks through the circumstances of life. Anytime you are having a challenge, think over it, the position of God, before you comment. When someone lying against you, sit back, know the position of God before you comment. When temptation come, what is God's position? All this divorce, 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 divorce everywhere, broken home. If you take time to know God's position, you will know 90% of this God is aware. God used this for a purpose, to preserve, to cleanse the house, to separate them from unclean and impure. See your dream in the name of Jesus. See your dream in the name of Jesus. Mira tu sueño en el nombre de Jesús. See your dream in the name of Jesus. Mira tu sueño en el nombre de Jesús. Because Jesus is Lord over your life. 
See your dream in the name of Jesus. See your dream in the name of Jesus. Vois ton rêve dans le nom de Jésus. When you see your dream, you know God's position concerns your affliction. God's position concerns your burden. God's position concerns what you are going through. God's position concerns your challenges. God's position concerns your situation. God's position concerns your condition. See your dream. Yes, you need to know God's position. Because oftentimes, he walks through the circumstances of life. You know how he helped Joseph in adverse circumstances. He helped Joseph. Look at the history of Joseph. He helped Joseph. He was with Joseph. And you with God, a majority. See your dream in the name of Jesus. See your dream in the name of Jesus. Vois ton rêve dans le nom de Jésus. One thing we don't know about our enemy. When they hit you, try to attack you, and you silent, it creates fear to your enemy. They, don't, they will not know your position. And they don't know what you mean by silent. But when you respond... They love respond. Play this is secret. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, your enemy love your respond. Your enemy love your respond. It gives them the next strategy to use. Next strategy. When they kick you, they Shout you, they lie against you, and you come out to say, You lie against me, you lie against me. They say, oh, Glory, they are happy. Hey, we hit him, we hit him. Hit him more, hit him more. Hey, hey, oh, hit him more, hit him more. The same says Satan. When you want to pray, you begin to say, Satan, 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 Satan will be happy. He always wants attention. He wants to hear the word Satan in your mouth. He wants you to. to Profess, confess, talk about him, talk about him. And when you don't talk about him, you just ignore him. You are not even measuring anything about him. It's always very painful to him. Satan loves attention. That is why I used to tell some of our members when people are in a prayer mood and you now stand up showing your truth, showing your stuff and all that. I said, they should help me give the name of people like that. Satan is using them. That is when they want to show, show all their stuff. Their attire, their beauty. You see them moving around the church at a time people are quiet. Satan likes attention. When you ignore Satan, you see me the way I ignore Satan. Mm, there is nothing you say unless God says talk. Mm, when you just say something, I will be looking. I want to know God's position. Even if God could not even give me a response instantly, I am always patient. Because there is nothing I will gain in response. Because I depend on God's ability, God's power, than my majority. God's authority is final. You know, they want to, you need support, you need. Mm, so, please, take note of that. Your enemy love your response. That gives them next strategy and tactic to use. When you don't respond and they abuse you, they curse you, they labest you, whatever they say about you, and you don't respond, that is the end of the matter. Yes, that is their end. But that is not God's end. Where they stop, God starts. Mm. So that's it. From your response, they know 
how mighty, how little, how big you are. When you talk, your enemy listens to your voice. From your voice, they know the value of what you are saying. Yes. So take note of this from today. Your enemy needs your response. That is why they attack you. And then when you are quiet, they don't know what you are doing. They are afraid. Your quietness, your silence is a danger, very dangerous. They, they too know God. They know God. It's only they don't believe. So when you are quiet, they are afraid that, hey, this man may be mighty in the spirit. Because they know you are a spirit man. Are you not a spirit man? Yeah. Does the spirit talk? Yeah. So take this home today in summary. Your enemy needs your response for attack. To attack you next, your response, they need it. So take note. Take note. Take note. Take note. And uh, when you don't respond, mean you have a big God who is fighting for you. Every response of your enemy, take it to God. Take it for prayer. If your enemy says you're a thief, write it down. Take it to your altar. If your enemy says you are stupid, write it down. Take it to altar. Don't use your mouth to reply. Take it to altar. So by the time you write all the response of your enemy, I will kill you, we destroy you, just write everything, date. They will kill you, they will destroy you, write it, and take it to the altar of God. And say, I'm a spirit. I'm only living in the physical body, learning to live in this physical world. So what else again? So take it to the altar of God. So that is, and the two, often time, God works through the circumstances of life. Your adverse circumstances, many of the often time, often time, many times, this adverse circumstances you see as an attack from enemy, from that, from that. <laughs> Mighty God are using them to clean, to separate you from unclean and impure elements that you are silent and quiet does not mean you are a Christian very gentle weary lie it's not mean that you are a child of God Christianity lies in the heart what does your heart say You may be seated. Thank you. Give me a greater understanding of your heart. That should be your prayer today. That you will be going in your heart. Give me a greater understanding of your heart. Because Jesus is Lord over my life. Because you are Lord over my life, Give me a greater understanding of your heart because you are Lord over my life. So this is what you need now. Give me a greater understanding of your heart because you don't understand God's heart. That is why when attack comes, you attack back the same way. And you never know that oftentimes the person that attack you does not matter. But the position of God concerning the attack matter. Tell your neighbor, often time, the person that attack me does not matter. But the position of God concerning that attack. Yes, that is it. If Judas were not sent to betray Jesus, 
and Jesus not, was not crucified, today we will not talk of Savior. The person that attacked me, oftentimes, does not matter. When you just say, ah, you attacked me. I look at him, it does not even matter. He's being used so to take you to the throne. Many a times, the attacker is being used to take you to the what? Throne. To the throne. It does not matter. It's just being used. It's a particle. But the position of God concerning that attack. What is your position, God, concerning this attack? Oh, yes, this position is to cleanse you, is to preserve you for the new level. Is to strengthen your desire and your determination for me, God. So these are the things we need to know. Please, don't waste your time over your enemy. Because you use the content of your word to strategize. I'll do it to you, I'll do it to you. Uh -huh. You want to see those behind you. Silent is the best answer for a fool. <laughs> Silent is the best answer for your enemy. Write it down. Silent is the best answer for my enemy. Yes. Silent is the best answer for my enemy. Nothing makes you better than your enemy when you respond. Nothing makes me better than my enemy when I respond. You are an idiot. You too, you are an idiot. What makes you better now? <laughs> Who is now enemy? Two of you. Two of you are now enemy of God. You are idiot. You two, you are idiot. Who is the Christian among you? Nothing make me better when I respond. So the attacker does not matter many times, but the position of God concerning the attack matter. So thank you.